Good morning, I'm crashed down amongst the blue lupins. These guys have really taken off over the winter. It's now mid-August and you can see they're coming to flower. And I like to let these guys flower just to give the bees a little bit of food through the winter, but it's now it's time to cut them down before they go to seed. So I'm just going to use my secateurs and cut these guys down at the ground level and then I'll chop them up and I'll use them as mulch around my fruit trees. I've cut back the blue lupin now and the profile of that bed is quite a lot different than what it was before. Uh, but what you'll see is down in amongst where the blue lupin was, there's a whole lot of weeds growing up in there so I'll give that bed a bit of a weed and then I've got this lovely pile of blue lupin biomass and I'm going to chop that up and that'll be um, mulch for for this garden here. So if I hadn't planted the, the green manure on here, um, this bed would be covered in grasses uh, by now. And we've also got a, a little bit of uh, rauraki or puha growing down here. Now this is um, it's a good vegetable. It's just like, uh, you can eat it like dandelion leaves. Um, and it's got a slight bitter tonic taste to it, so it's a good digestive. Uh, also the chickens love it, it's really good. I've got a great specimen over here. Probably be a little bit bitter for, for us to eat, but the chickens are going to love it. Have a look at the size of that one there. So it's from the dandelion family, or Asteraceae. And uh, it's a compositi flower, so it tends to sow its seeds quite, quite rapidly like a dandelion. So you might want to um, usually nip it off before uh, before it goes to flower but it's a great thing to have in the garden a lot of people consider it a weed but completely edible so I've still got one more bed over there I'm going to cut down those lupins there and um, I'll introduce you to this other green manure uh, this one here this here is Phacelia now I'm, I'm not cutting this one down just now because I'm going to let that flower this is a, another great bee food and it's actually a beautiful beautiful flower um, a kind of a, a purpley blue um, that'll come in kind of at the, the early stages of spring that should flower and pro provide some early food for the bees but I particularly don't want the, the lupin to flower because the, the seed pods of these once they once they harden up they, they're a little bit jaggy and uh, and uh, quite hard so um, some seasons I will I will save the seeds and, uh, and sow them the next year but this year I've got I've got plenty of these at the moment, so um, I'm cutting them down before they seed. So I've given the bed a, a light weed. It didn't need too much. Last year it was uh, still grass here, and so I've just kind of turned it over into a fairly new bed. So there's still a little bit of grass coming up, so I just wanted to make sure I, I nipped that in the bud before uh, it got too out of control. So now I'm going to take the, the full stems of lupin, and I'm going to use the shears and chop it up into, into smaller bits and then we'll apply that to the bed and that'll slowly break down, it'll, it'll suppress any more weed growth and it'll also um, help to condition the soil and get the soil humming. So here we are, we've uh, covered up the bed with our chopped up blue lupin and that's going to um, bed down nicely and uh, condition the soil. One of the key principles of permaculture is in producing a yield. And I see a green crop as a yield, um, even though it's not something we can directly eat, but it certainly is something that feeds the soil. With blue lupin it's important to 
not pull them pull it up the plants when you come to harvest them you just want to cut them off at the at the base of the stem the reason for this is uh, blue lupin is a nitrogen fixing plant and what happens is at the roots levels they are the roots um, sequester nitrogen in little nodules uh, in the soil and uh, when you cut them off at the base of the stem that nitrogen will get released back into the soil and feed your plants uh, so in terms of uh, when to sow uh, root crops things like um, phacelia and blue lupin can be overwintered um, also wheat, oat and barley are good good green crops um, Something like buckwheat is a, is an, a, a potassium accumulator and you can use that before or after a root crop. Blue lupin in particular um, is good for hungry crops like brassicas, so that's your cauliflower or your broccoli. Uh, that's one that you want to plant uh, before you intend to put a, uh, a brassica crop in. Um, this is a fairly new bed so I'm, I'm still trying to, trying to feed it up and, uh, and get it humming. Um, as I say it was grass last year. So I'm probably just going to plant a few uh, a few strawberries in the, amongst this over the over the summer, um, and see how we get on with those.